them by this profoundly shocked. And that's why my first question to you, Jury, was how much did you know about me before <laughs> you wrote this? Uh, it was it caught me off guard, and it was quite a fun adventure. I'm really loving it, and I'll be watching it again. I'm so excited about my new freedom and my new liberty and all the affirmations that you spoke to my life. I'm usually the encouraging person in people's lives. This has been a huge encouragement to me, Jerry. You clearly have a gift of hearing from the Lord, and I affirm that. And I'm, uh, I can tell everybody that you and I have not exchanged any biographical information about each other before this, which uh, affirms a really super unique gifting that you have. And I applaud you, and I'm excited about seeing it blossom further. It's a life-altering, encouraging word that will change your life forever if you apply it. And it's totally worth the investment um, to do it. Don't hesitate. Don't wonder, is this right for me? Is this the right time for me? Just do it now because you need, you need the encouragement now. Don't wait. And as far as the the podcast goes and get, becoming a legend, I, I encourage everyone to really just pray and talk to God about it. And if you feel le- led to get or to sign up to get one, I, I, I strongly encourage it because not only did this edify what God is doing in my life, but it also gave me the ability to share what he's done in my life with you guys. Mm -hmm. So that if it needed to, if any of you needed to hear specific things that were said by either the story or by the guest, that it really allows people to hear that and really Mm -hmm. allows them to get your story on top of the story that you wrote with us. Brilliantly said, thank you, John. I would just recommend it to get a story because it's the most unique thing I've heard of, but it is so anointed. So I would do it for two reasons. One is because it's anointed and you're hearing from God and that in itself is a beautiful thing to have God use somebody else to tell you something about yourself. So I would do it for that. And I also would do it to spur another person's passion to help sew into what you're doing because we need people like you who are pioneers, who are boundary pushers, who (laughs) want to pursue something not everyone's pursuing. Um, We want to give you encouragement and we want to love on you. And that's one way we can do it since we don't get to see you in person. Cool, Um, thank you. Yeah, thank so you I very much. Reason. This was such an amazing experience, honestly, and I am so grateful that literally the Lord has given you this gift because it really is powerful and impacting for me tonight. And I can, and I'm sure by just me hearing you just read my story to me, it was so touching and it's what I needed to hear for this week. And I know a lot of people felt that way if they've come on your show. So I, definitely thank you so much for your work and definitely just keep staying <laughs> staying in this field it is a true true blessing thank you wow man Lacey thank you for saying that And hello and welcome to the Legends of the Wind podcast. I'm Jury Shank. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight is a very, very special night. We're having, um, we're bringing back Dr. Nick Goff to the show. Uh, and uh, he's going to tell the story behind the story. Um, he was our guest a few months ago, or about a month and a half ago. And uh, he had a profound experience on the show. Uh, through a story that I titled Owls Among Us, and he'll be sharing uh, what happened on his end on how that unfolded for him. And so I think you're going to be pretty surprised and amazed about what God was doing in his life and in his ministry. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you haven't done so already, would you mind hitting the subscribe button and the like button and hit the notification bell so that you can be aware of our future broadcasts? Thank you so much for doing that. 
It helps us get the word out and let YouTube know that we have people watching. Now, so was, for those of you who are new to our show, what I'd like to explain to you is the difference between a prophetic word and a prophetic story. A prophetic word is something that is given uh, in a church setting or in a conference, and it's a part of a ministry. But if you look behind me, there's a painting here that my wife has designed. My wife does prophetic art in painting. And prophetic stories are the same thing. It's a, it's a fictional narrative, a creation using my gift, where we combine the prophetic gift and the arts. And it's sort of like a, a story that's a portrait of someone, and it tells their identity and destiny. And so it's a created work. It's a gift-giving thing. And so it's different than a prophetic word given in ministry. Now, um, some people will criticize us for charging money for this, so I want you to know that the fee and the price that goes into it takes into my training, my talent, the ability to put on this show, and it goes to helping us out. So I hope that makes sense to you and that you're not offended by it, but we are here to pioneer a new expression of the prophetic. Oh, okay, thanks so much, guys. Now, I'm gonna be bringing on Dr. Nick Goff right now. Hold on a second. Dr. Nick, how are you? Jury, it's so good to be with you tonight. Cool. Thanks for making the time to come back, man. Uh, absolutely. You know, Jury, when we first met and, and uh, seeing your gift in action, you know, I, was, I was amazed uh, at the accuracy uh, when I was listening to the background and, and the, the parallels between art and what you do. Uh, you know, Jerry, I've been in ministry 42 years. Uh, there was a point in time I was traveling probably a third of the year, 100, 100 days plus, teaching people how to hear the voice of God. I've seen miracles. I've seen the dead raised, blind eyes wow. open, deaf ears open. Uh, but when you gave me that word and I sat back and listened, it was uh, the timing was absolutely amazing. I mean, I, I was... But yeah, yeah, I won't, I won't get into don't, that. Don't get into it yet. So I, I know, I know you're so eager. I'm eager too. But <laughs> for for people who don't know your story, uh, the prophetic story, I'm going to be reading it if you don't mind. Sure. So I'd like to refresh everybody's uh, mind and their imaginations of Dr. Nick's story, and then after the, that, uh, we'll have a talk about timing and accuracy if that's okay so here we go i'll read your story it's, it's not terribly long and uh it's beautiful and i love the imagery so here we go okay owls among us the night air was crisp and full of moisture as the fall season was upon the land the leaves were still on the trees but now some dropped down to the ground winter was on its way the moon shone through the low wispy clouds a storm was coming with its heavy rain on the ground, various rodents scampered around, gathering their final forage of food before the snow came. A ragged-looking fox sniffed the leaves and bushes, hunting for a snack. The fox's eyes had darkness in them. He was sly and clever as he strategized where he would find his next meal. Heartless was his name. Up above the trees flew an owl who was also hunting for prey. His eyes were full of light, and he could see in the darkness even at far distances. This owl saw the future and could bring it back to the present. Yet this owl was operating in the season alone, which he would find out was his biggest mistake. The owl heard some rustling in the leaves below and saw a mouse run across the forest floor. The owl dove in a rush. And just as he was about to snatch the mouse, the fox snarled and struck the owl in the face with his claws. This attack marked the owl and caused him incredible pain. He re recoiled and fell down. The fight between the owl and the fox was intense. Both wrestled around in an incredible battle. Fur and feathers flew in all directions. The fox snapped his jaws and tried to bite the owl's neck and wings. The owl, however, used his wings to and tried to get higher in the air and take advantage of the fox with his talons. In the end, neither the fox nor the owl ate their dinner, but the battle left them both quite wounded. The fox left, thinking he was the successor. The owl left with a gash on his face, which healed into a scar that made him never forget this attack. Over time, the scar became smaller, but the memory remained. Through this pain, the owl's friends knew him by the name of Nick. 
"'Tis but a scratch,' said the funny English movie, but to Nick it was more than a flesh wound. Later, Nick gathered with other owls of the land. The great wise owl Miranda summoned them, for, a mission, for there was a mission for them to behold. Nick had flown for many years under the guidance of Miranda. She was ancient, but you could not tell this from looking at her. She had a marvelous coat of feathers that covered her body that seemed to sparkle like stars all over them. Miranda was also larger than the other owls, and her sight was incredible, seeing at far distances and knowing the lay of the land. Miranda contained the spirit of wisdom. Nick and the other owls, both young and old, male and female, all came to Miranda's nest in the large oak tree in the center of the forest. They all wondered about this time and opportunity. After the flock settled, Miranda stepped out onto the branch above them. She said, Darkness, mystery, and disease are upon this land. There is deep dread in the forest because of this. The foxes and wolves have returned. A murmur and all the owls spread throughout the group. Hush, my children, there is something at hand, a plan. Some of you need to fly high and far and get help from other forests. Others will need to take stations on the edge of the forest from one side of the lake to the other side. And some of you must station at the tops of the mountains to look at the valley below. The forest and its animals all need your eyes. And when you see a threat, take action in groups of two or three. This season is not for lone actors, for the beasts of the land have increased. This is the darkness I speak of. The group of owls all looked around and processed Miranda's directives. Each one understood where they belonged. Nick heard in his heart that he needed to travel over the land and back and forth from one side of the lake to the other, only to land in the moment of need. Nick asked Miranda, what about the mystery and disease? Miranda looked straight into Nick's eyes and asked, have you forgotten all the lessons I have taught you, Nick? Don't you remember the darkness contains all the hidden treasures you have found? Nick, are you not a healing owl? Did you forget you see the roots of the wounds? This disease, dear Nick, is your assignment. You heard correctly. You are to fly over back and forth over the land from one side of the lake to the other. Seek the healing assignment, Nick. Do you understand? Nick bowed deep and held his wings out in honor. My wise lady, you know my heart and heard it well. I will do as you ask. There is more, Nick, said Miranda. Come on to this branch next to me. All the other owls watched Nick as he flew from the very back of the group and landed on the branch. Miranda was a whole head taller than Nick. She towered over him and reached out with one wing around him. With special words, she cooed and hooted low tones over him, and only the way an owl could speak. The words from her breast beat out in a rhythm. Nick closed his eyes and imagined the love he felt from Miranda. Something different happened. Miranda stopped and Nick opened his eyes and they looked at each other. Nick asked, what did you do? Years ago, you earned the name Nick because of the battle with the fox. What I did was speak to your heart a healing prayer. You will find new things that will change your name. We will know you as Nick, yes, but my words are birthing a new name in you. Soon the entire land will know about you again, but not for what you have done in the past, but who you are in the future. Nick inhaled deeply and released the breath of life from within him. There was a shift in his heart and a spark of hope as well. But aren't I too old for this? asked Nick. Miranda scoffed and said, Do you know what you are asking? Do you want this mountain or not, Nick? Look at these other owls. Do you not know what they have done with you, for you, and by you? Do you now know what a gift you are to them? Today is your assignment, but there is one more thing you need. Miranda stepped back into the large hole into the tree. All eyes were on Nick and Miranda. This was a special time for a new commissioning. Nick looked down at them and he waited. He peered into their eyes and felt their love and compassion. One owl gave a gentle hoot. Peace, my brother. Miranda returned with a lucky rabbit's foot chain on it with a golden key and gave it to Nick. I have brought you fortune and favor. You are going to places over the land and the shores of this lake with this. When gatekeepers see you with it, 
they will immediately let you open the doors. Therefore know this, we have already won the battle. You will unlock doors to open up investments in places that are not just within the four walls of our Rus. You must take those who have been waiting in the wings and tell them to follow their dreams and the desires of their heart. It is what we call permission granted. Now, Nick, I grant you permission to go with what is in your heart and to know and to see that you will achieve all the desires that belong to you. Nick looked at the lucky rabbit's foot and its golden key. As they placed it into the feathers of his chest, he felt the weapon touch his heart. Suddenly, light shined in his eyes, and he felt an incredible force of joy ignite inside him. This new power released in him even greater confidence that what, that what he saw years ago would finally come to pass. His other owls cheered with delight. Miranda reached out her wing to Nick one more time and said, Go! The disease and darkness have increased. Go! All of you, I release all of you, all of your desires, all of your dreams, all of your passions. It is time to open up the night and bring forth the dawn of the sun. Nick flapped his wings and took to the air. All the owls joined him, and together they flew as one flock over the lake. They looked around and saw their specific stations, and then in teams of twos and threes, they split apart and followed their assignments. The lake below glistened in the moonlight, and the stars sparkled above. Nick took his place on one side of the lake in the tallest tree where he could find and look down at the foxes and wolves. With each night and with each day, he made his transitions over the lake, looking for where he needed to heal the land. Each animal he encountered saw the lucky rabbit foot chain and its key and knew Nick was the right man for the job. He healed the animals and they, then they opened the doors for him and for more. Nick saw the creature's dreams come true. Joy erupted over the land. The foxes and the wolves saw they couldn't control the forest any longer. Delight filled Nick's heart, for his dreams came true as well. Inceptio. There's your story, sir. Now, before I let you speak, (laughs) I want the audience to know where I was coming from. Okay, So you ordered a story, and you blessed me with the full price, even though we were having a, a sale. Thank you so much. But... What happened is, is the way I work with the show is we're on a, we show Monday nights, and typically I write the story within the previous week. Now, the previous week on Tuesday, I started seeing in my spirit and hearing in my heart the words owls among us, and I started picturing just the beginning of the page. And Wednesday comes, and Holy Spirit says to me very clearly, Jury, you must write this story Friday night. Not Thursday night, not Saturday or Sunday night, but Friday night. Now, I could have done it at any of those times I had available to me. I told my wife, Alicia, and I told my mom that on Wednesday what I heard. So I didn't know what to make of it. So Friday night comes, and I'm in the mountain time zone, and it was about 7.30. I started writing and got the download. Now, when I got this story, I was really amazed by its imagery and how it was very, very magical and very, uh, you know, there's a fantasy element to it. Well, what I was thinking was the battle between the fox and the wolf, or excuse me, the fox and the owl, I was thinking, oh, it happened years ago, maybe in the 80s or 90s. Now, go ahead, tell us what the truth is here. (laughs) Well, unbeknownst to you, that Friday night, despite the time change and everything else, it would have been in 930 East Coast time, Eastern uh, Eastern time. I just got an email that was uh, tragic from an individual and uh, hurting, painful. Thus, when you were talking about the fox and the scar, it, it, it was, Dre, it was so accurate. So then when we came on hearing that, the the it, it was like, Lord, you've gone ahead of me. Uh, everything's in your control. It brought me peace. It brought me the joy. It's, it's, it's how the prophetic rolls. But, but Jerry, you listening and writing out what you did was so the Holy Spirit. And even hearing it again, you tell the story a second time. I'm like, wow, I just, I gleaned even more out of it. 
how profoundly accurate that was. Uh, it was a word of healing for me. It was a word in season, on time. That's what amazed me when you're like, Nick, you aren't going to believe this, but it was at 930 at night when I, I'm like, no way, get out of here. Because there was no you know, correspondence with us whatsoever. You had listened to the voice of the Lord and the Lord gave you that download. And so that's what I love about the prophetic because it's like a two-edged sword, like it blessed you, it blessed me. And the peace that gave me, the confidence that gave me, which should have been, or it had the potential to be, uh, just take me out of the game because of the word you gave me. Not only did it let me stay in the game, but I had peace, Jerry. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the gift that you have uh, for you being obedient to, to do what you do. Because I've been in prophetic ministry for a long time. But the gift that you have is so unique. And and it was a kiss from the Lord from me when you when I heard the story. I'm like, what? What did you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So it was very profound. It was highly accurate and, and encouraging. I'm I'm still in awe of all this because you know, uh you've been in ministry for forty two years and oh, makes me I old. <laughs> I, and I, I'm a new kid on the block, right? And uh -huh. and yet I feel so thankful and humbled that the Father God would allow me to help you. You know, uh, you know the the story of the book of Job, where Job has his counselors, yes. and 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 then there's Elihu, who's uh -huh. the who's the young guy in the crowd. <laughs> Uh huh. And and yet yet he was the one that provided what Job needed in a time of distress. And for me to be trusted by God to help you as a senior leader in your congregation in your ministry in a place of crisis, right when you needed help, the very hour it was being given and the attack came. You know, I, I, I see myself as a separate uh, entity of this whole thing that you've been going through. It's just that I delivered a message to you that helped you, encouraged you, and strengthened you. And for, a lot, for God to allow me that opportunity to help you, that's amazing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, just, just the timing of it, you heard, I mean, the, the development of the story that you put into it, the time that you're putting in writing and developing and by you even taking a step because if you had had you gotten that earlier in the week it probably would have turned the pressure valve down for you but you listen to the lord so here it is 7 30 your time mountain time 9 30 my time i'm literally flipping on my computer to get one of those kind of emails that you don't want to get right. and uh and then the word that you gave the story that you that you wrote out uh was so on time it was the symbolism was like that's that's what i'm dealing with that's the spirit behind it and it, it showed me the now but it also showed me and lord this is where you're taking me and mm. this is what you're doing with me it's that john 16 13 word that the holy spirit will tell you things to come but you did it in story yeah. so that's why you know when i heard the story the first time i was picking up on like oh yeah that's so right but when I listened to it the second time, now I heard, and this is what I'm going to do with all this, which it, it, I guess I was blessed both times. Jerry. The first <laughs> of course. Time I heard it, like, wow. That was so amazing. And then <laughs> the second time I heard it, listened to it by you telling it was, oh, wow. And Lord, this is what you're doing through that. So wow. both times, just so encouraging. That's great. Great. Wow. We have, um, uh... Oh, I don't I know what to say. <laughs> thank I you. I want to say thank you. I want to say, and I want to say thank you for, uh, you know, I was listening to the, in the background of this show and what you're doing is pioneering something unique in the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, when I listen to, to different prophetic ministries and see how God is captivating in the marketplace through the arts and taking back in the, in the realm of the seven mountains. Yes. Uh, you're, you're doing something that's taking back and it's so unique and, just it was it was life jury you breathe your oh. word had so much life and healing in my life wow uh, it was uh, it was truly a kiss from the lord so i want to say thank you for listening be obedient you're welcome operating in faith even in the preparation yeah because i know what that's like you know if i get it done earlier and then i have it and so i meet on this i have more time to marinate but 
9.30 at night, East Coast time, you heard God, you wrote it out. <laughs> it was like, it, like the Lord was saying, hey, this is what I'm doing for him right now. You don't know this jury, right. <laughs> right? but you're going to partner in this. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, one of uh, my, my pastor from LA, when I was living there with my family, Tom Wright, who I hope is still watching at this time of the night, um, <laughs> he said the following Saturday, when you have your church service, uh -huh. He told me on the phone, he goes, everyone said that Nick's message that night was the best we've ever heard. If I heard correctly, even people from your previous congregation in Montana said the same thing. And yeah. Pastor Tom said something that just blew my mind. He says, Jerry, Dr. Nick could not have the freedom that he ministered in unless you were involved in, in this whole oh, thing. So true. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so what that looked like is Friday, I get devastating news, and then it hit me again Saturday afternoon, and I was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. So we do a Saturday night service. I had to get up and speak Saturday night, and I had people like, wow, like Nick, you know, that is like one of the best words, the fire of God was on you. And uh, so the breath of the Lord was definitely on me. So I agree with Tom, it was grace. <laughs> I had a grace, and I think part of it was a result that by your ministry that the Lord prepared my heart wow. to see your plan. Like, okay. And, and in how you gave that, it was a now word. It was a Kairos now mm -hmm. in the moment word wow. that got me through it. But it was also the hope of Lord, you you're in this. Praise God. So, thank again, you. Jury, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, <laughs> thank you for, man. Thank you for using your gift. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, let me bring in the chat here. So we have some people commenting. Sure. Mike Smith says, hi, jury and Dr. Nick, Robin, your bride says hello yeah. all chris blackaby in australia is chiming in amazing time hey chris good to hear from you uh gail my mom says so excited for this illumination when god chooses to enlighten us as to what he's doing i find it so extraordinarily minute in the details it often leaves me speechless listening is so important thanks mom and Mike says, this story, like all stories, are amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, Tom, if you're in there, say something, too, if you're there. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, your comments and such encouragement. Um, you know, one thing is, like, I got some pushback from our show. Uh, I don't think I told you this, Dr. Nick, but they had to do with someone saying that I was being a Luciferian New Ager, because of the character of Miranda, the uh, why, the spirit of wisdom of the owl, and uh, and that um, that that we shouldn't be speaking to the spirit of wisdom, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know what, this is it's like uh, it, the body of Christ cracks me up because <laughs> it, 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 this is story, this is metaphor, right? Uh, it's not it's not literal. It's it's yeah. So that's to be, it cracks me up. I, I don't know how you're, you know, but I remember when the, the move, the book, the shack came out and people were livid and it's, yeah. it's meta, it's a metaphor, you know, it's representative, right. It's right. not literal. And here's the thing. Who was the first person that was really telling stories in the Bible that was really racking people's brains? Wasn't it Jesus? Yeah, Jesus <laughs> and, was the master of the parable. Yes. Yeah. And, and his disciples, his own crowd was like, all these figures of speech. Why do you keep doing that? Now, right. if I were to ever, I have not been to a conference yet to, to, to do what I do. But I have something I want to break the ice with uh, at the conference. And I, I will go, everybody, uh, if you have ever heard someone leave the church because they're offended, raise your hand. And everybody raises their hand. Okay, now, next thing. Don't do it just yet, but if you raise your hand, if you've ever heard that someone offended, that left the church offended because the speaker was always using figures of speech and riddles and sayings that they didn't understand. And it'd be crickets, wouldn't it? Yeah. There would no one raise their hand. Why? What has happened to the church? The church has lost its story, and Jesus wants to bring back story. He is the author, and we are co-authors in, in the story that we are partnering together. And so, you know, people who are Christians or even prophetic give me crap, 
and they just don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> you know? I no, just, they don't, you know what? They, they don't understand, Jury. So think about this. God is the ultimate story maker, right? Before you were born, I knew you. That means that he has a story for you. He's already had things planned out, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Before you were born, I knew you. I know the plans. Jeremiah is speaking over Israel, but the destiny, right? Yeah. And, uh, he's Alpha and Omega. So what and, you do in this in telling the story is just releasing a little of what's in heaven. This is the plan. This is out of the book. Right. It's it's what I've learned to go to heaven and go to the library of heaven and read someone's story. And it's not a literal, true, like natural story. It could be a mystery, a thriller, a fantasy, a a love story. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, the Bible does say on earth as it is in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. and, and doesn't the Bible say that Jesus said, I knew you before? Yep. See, we, we, we come to earth from heaven. We're, we're also created from God. And we, we existed before we were born in heaven, in his being. And he knew us before. But when we come to be born in the natural, we have this amnesia and we have to grow up and mature. We go through crap. We make mistakes. We have to repent. We grow. Uh, we sometimes miss it. And do we finish our story? And what I do is I go to heaven in the spirit and I write people's story and I help encourage them. And that's basically it. Um, and I think that for you, Dr. Nick, you know, you're, you've been in prophetic ministry for 42 years. And I have come to see that the prophetic is not the end all to be all. It's not the destination. It's just a part of the journey. And what I've seen in the prophetic gifting is that it's a gateway, a doorway to encounter. That if mm -hmm. you can see in the spirit, if you can hear his voice, that means you can get out of bed and wake up and stand up and go into the rooms of your father's house and be with your family. It's just about relationship. Um, so that's how I understand it. And, you know, um, Dr. Nick, I believe that uh, part of your story mentions that you're going to get a new name. Yeah. I want to propose to you, and I don't know if I said this the last time, that it's not that your name, Nick, is going to be different. I believe that God's giving you an invitation of identity to see the prophetic in a whole new light where where the mystical Christianity, the one, the mystical Christ-centered, the scriptural, the biblical Christ-centered mystical life. And what is mystical? It just right. means that you have an encounter and in a relationship with God. It's nothing more than that. It's not new age. I mean, people in Christendom like to just dog on new agers, but I think that they're tapping into things without Christ that is a, what I call a spiritual technology that we as religious Christians would reject but God is actually inviting us into relationship with heaven, with him. So I think the new identity that is promising to you would be an expansion of what you've already learned. And I'm not trying to tell you everything. I think there's other people, too, that uh, are aware and even better than anything I would know. Um, but what do you think about all that? You know, Jerry, I think uh, we go when the Bible says prophesy according to your portion of faith. Mm -hmm. And so in prophetic ministries, sometimes you're just your 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 faith is in words of knowledge. Uh, if it's in healing, your your faith might be you're calling out a word of knowledge for healing. And you just know if I call out something for backs, you've seen God do that. Yeah. And so what happens is our faith doesn't grow. Our faith stays in that. Mm. Uh, you know, it's with words and knowledge, you know, uh, Lord, let me start believing for names, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, but I'm comfortable here. I might miss it and that, and I don't want to look, you know, awkward. And so there's realms that we can operate in the prophetic that require faith and glory. What you're doing, it's a gift. You have a faith for it. You just know that you'll enter heaven. You'll get the story. You'll see it. And that's a grace. And so there's a lot more flavors when we, uh, well, here, the theology, right? First Corinthians 12, there's nine gifts. Five of the gifts are what theologians call revelatory gifts. And a revelatory gift involves hearing the voice of God. So prophecy is one, discerning of spirits, interpretation of tongues. But then there's words of knowledge where you're getting downloads of information, of word of wisdom. I have a friend of mine, 
Uh, he's a, a aerospace uh, engineer. He has 22 patents and he gets a word of wisdom like Joseph had. It's going to rain. This is what's going to happen. And this is what you need to do. A great marketplace gift, right? But the Lord will give him downloads and that's his gift schematics early in the morning. And he'll test those schematics out because he's sending people out in outer space and God's giving him downloads for technology. And so there's, I believe, Jerry, we're coming into a realm of the prophetic that is going to stretch people that we haven't seen, but it's what the Lord is doing. And you're a pioneer in that, buddy. Oh, thank you. That's a great explanation. And I'm glad that uh, your friend uh, is uh, doing what he's doing. I, I had a friend that passed away several years ago that was doing similar work, and he was yeah. profound in my life. Todd, I was named as a Martin Stewart, a dear friend of mine, and he was pioneering uh, physics and technology and all sorts of stuff. So it was a, he, he, he gave me permission to fail in, in my prophetic gifting, and uh, he gave me room to practice in, in that. And so I was his intercessor for years. Unfortunately, he passed away suddenly. So, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Gail says, behold, I do a new thing. And Tom says, hey, Jerry. Hey, Tom. Good to see you. Hey, Tom. <laughs> wow. Now, um, so it's almost like you're being given a clean slate in a sense, right? Like a whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, like it's all white, you know, and, and then he's going to give you colors of markers to do a design of some kind, to map out something new. And so I think that's a fun idea of an invitation of creativity uh, where where we come and we humble ourselves and like, well, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> there's more things like, we, there's a saying, you don't know what you don't know, right? Right. And, and but he knows. And um, I think that, if we open ourselves up, because you said that we're pioneering, that the people are being stretched in the prophetic, I think that um, I think that we need to be ready for more. I like what Kim Clement used to say when he was living. He says that when God speaks, He comes in an unpresentable form, and people who are religious can be offended by that. And I always thought, like you know, if, if God were to send a homeless man to me who had matted hair, stunk to high heaven, looked ugly, maybe had a torn shirt, and yet he had a brick of gold that was from heaven, would I be offended at the messenger that brought heaven to me? And I think that, that we need to be aware of that dynamic, that the, the new things that God wants to release on earth, not gonna come in a comfortable way, or something that we're familiar with already. It's why they call it a new wine skin. <laughs> oh, good. That, you know, it, it just makes me think, you know, I always uh, hear Randy Clark talk about uh, the greatest opposition to new revivals are the past revivalists. And uh, and so it's you, it's that religious spirit yeah. that's like, you know, wants to quiet what the Holy Spirit's doing and, and keep you in place instead of dreaming. And think about this. With his words, God creates heaven and earth, right? Just with his words. Mm. And, and so we limit so many times when we get comfortable in the place we're in. But again, Jerry, thank you for thank you for forging the way. Because I really believe what you're doing will open the path, open the gate for other people that yeah. have this gifting in that. So Yeah, thank you. You know, I learned how to do what I do because of Kim Clement's modeling. I I never met Kim face to face. But when I was living in Los Angeles, I would go to any meeting I could uh, to see him work. And um, I, I seen his shows for online for years. And he demonstrated incredible risk taking. We also showed creativity in the prophetic through his worship and music and piano playing and singing. Yeah. Uh, I am indebted to his fathering uh, in my life. And um, so when I do these stories, I do an incredible risk every single show. And it's scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I look at what Kim did and I said, well, if Kim can do it, so can I. Uh -huh. And, and if it, I want his ceiling to be my floor. Uh, I'm not trying to copy Kim uh, or compete with him in, or his, his mandate. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But I want to take what I have and bring it to the people. And it, it's so weird because to me, this is normal. <laughs> and, <I'm, laughs> and I have to always remind myself that other people don't know that. And it's awkward yeah. sometimes. But when people are crying or, or they're moved, they're emotional, I'm just so thankful because it's like, oh, because I don't try to put, per, I don't try to manipulate people's hearts. Um, I don't know what is in the story that's going to touch them. I have no idea. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I look at what Kim did and, and he released heaven to the people. And I think that um, his risk taking was something that really touched my heart consistently. And I think that God honors that because absolutely uh, every risk I've taken, he's shown up and, and helped. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what that for people that are listening, Jerry, is, is in the prophetic. I don't think people understand the risk. Uh, that when we step out, you know, is this me? Is this God? You know, First Corinthians thirteen nine. We know in part, we prophesy in part, and so whenever somebody steps out prophetically, you're taking a risk. Stepping into writing a story as you're doing and taking the time and and putting into it, uh, that's a huge risk. It's a huge risk, right. and so I want I, I want to celebrate you in that. Thank and you. and uh, and then Kim Clement's a great example of where he push things into so. yeah and that's what you're doing thank you one of the things I'm, I'm wanting to try to step into next is uh do it live not, not, not live like this but not prepare the story written down ahead of time but to literally have someone fresh in front of me like right then give that story uh because God told me when this whole thing started in January 20th 2008 he said to me you will be able to walk into a room and tell people their stories. He didn't say I prepared ahead of time. So Mm -hmm. when I do this, I I write it down and I type on a computer. Uh, What I was thinking to practice is uh, audio record me, uh, not on the show, but audio record me doing the story so I I can flex those muscles and, and develop that and then take a transcript and then clean it up and then present it. And after I get comfortable with that, I, I'm, I think I could do that. <laughs> you know what? That sounds like the pathway to the Lord, right? I mean, of just how he develops the gift in, uh, in the prophetic, you know, what we talked about taking risk. But mm-hmm. I think that's, that's the place you grow, you step out. You know, I remember when I first started hearing God's voice, it was like, is this me? Is this God? I'd write things out. And it's pretty, pretty soon it's on site with insight. So, yeah. yeah. I can yeah. see you doing that, Jerry. <laughs> Cool. That'd be awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Robin, uh, your wife says, I'm looking forward to 2023. It's going to be amazing. And then Tom, Pastor Tom says, yes, others will follow. So let's step in. Cool. Wow. You know, I I love Pastor Tom. Pastor Tom was absolutely instrumental in my wife's and I, uh, a path of Christ. We we were previously going to Sean Bowles Church Expression Fifty Eight. That's where we met. We got married, um, and uh, so we were looking. We knew that our time at Expression was changing, and we needed to shift. But we didn't know where to go, or at least I didn't know where to go. And and so some people that were friends of ours were like, "Hey, this church knows how to go to heaven," and I'm like, "Wait." What's that? I want to know what that is. What is that? How do you go to heaven? And so we show up at a Shepherd's Gate Church in Culver City, but Pastor Tom was there. And he he um he had church on Saturday nights. And he actually had two services. Um we start off with seven o'clock with worship and with teaching, and he would teach us so that we're already seated in heavenly places. We don't have to wait till we die to go there because of that. Jesus is the gateway to the Father. And so in him, we can go and we can see in the spirit and experience him and his love. Then we would break for dinner and we'd have great food and we would share with each other, ask questions. And then after some period of time, Uh, we go back into the sanctuary and it's what I call the Montessori school of the spirit. It was a time of safe. It was a safe place to scripturally experiment and seeing in the spirit and engage the heavens. And we started 
all of us started having encounters of different kinds. Things would happen. We would see things. And it blew our minds what was going on. And we were like, Alicia and I were afraid at first. We're like, oh, is this, are we going to be deceived? Or are we going to get into trouble? But Tom and the other speakers would show us in the Bible what we were learning. And that alleviated our fears. And so, Tom, thank you very much for being part of our life and still being with us in our journey. So he showed us a lot. <laughs> wow. Well, Tom. yeah. So let me ask you some more questions. Um, sure. What is God showing you about the near future for your ministry? You know what? Uh, one of the things that you said in is is the back and forth, right, and bringing healing. And so I, uh, you know, I see God opening up doors for me for travel. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, we're pioneering a church right now. God's favor and grace is on that, but I really see that. Uh, it gave me hope. There was something about the other owls that really, in your story, was like, you know, God brought me from the back back up, and uh, I'm like, well, I'm not even seeking that, but. You know, we've laid things down to to do this. And so we've cut out travel and things like that. So it was wow. encouraging, like, okay, Lord, I'm not seeking this, but you see, it was a kiss of the Lord saying, hey, Nick, I see where you're at. I know where you're at and uh, haven't forgotten about you. Wow. And so that was encouraging. It, it, again, hearing it again for the second time, I, it was as impacting or probably more impacting because I, I was so fixated on the wolf and the scar because that happened immediately and there was grace on it. And so I felt presence on both times you read that, Jerry. It was wow. amazing. It was, a, it was dynamic. I think the, the owl Miranda, uh, who represents the spirit of wisdom for you, you ha can't forget the lucky rabbit's foot with the golden key. Now, just so you know, it's a symbolic thing. It's not lucky rabbit's foot. It's, it's, <laughs> it's favor. Doesn't the book of Proverbs say that yeah. the spirit of wisdom brings us favor and wealth and fortune? And that that yeah. is scriptural and loving and biblical. I mean, do we really have to defend the Bible? <laughs> but well, I think, know, go ahead, go ahead. I think, you know, and you're, 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 you're saying the story and to the people hearing it, it doesn't mean anything. The golden key, the rabbit's foot. Okay, that's, what, what does that mean? But to me, yes, uh, we came, we were, we were pastoring in Great Falls, Montana for 14 years. We had a large church, church of around a thousand people. And I had intercessors give me a golden key when I first came there. They presented it to me saying, God is giving you the keys of the city. And so when you said that to me, that favor that I had in that city, I mean, meeting with the city leaders and just a lot of influence wow. in that city. When I saw that, to me, that meant everything. It's like, wow, not only wow. did you give me a golden key in this place, Lord, but a rabbit's foot. And uh, it, it, so it was like a double blessing. But to the person hearing that, the symbolism wouldn't have meant anything. Oh. But to me, the parable is like, wow, Lord, I know what favor is. Favor to me is currency in heaven. When you have it, it's epic. When you don't, you right. realize that you're really aware of it. So hearing that God's given me a key, it was like, Lord, thank you. Wow. Because I consider favor absolutely from heaven. And wow. Well, this is great because in Great Falls, you were given a key to the city. Guess what, yeah. guy? Dr. Nick, heaven has given you a key to the nation. You're going to yeah. take that back and forth over the lake to the different yeah. places. You're not just limited to a tree, you know what I mean? Like a city. <laughs> yeah. You are being given everything in the nation. I would say, heck, make it the global, right? Let's say you're yeah. going to travel to other countries as well. And you have favor as well all over. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. That's Yuri. so good. You yeah, know, I also see something. Uh, I'm just picking up something. So I see relationships in um, the level of leadership that you carry. I see you reconnecting with other people that you had uh, encounters and interaction with in the past, that time has passed and distance geographically has passed. But I see that when you are going to be traveling to conferences, to other churches, there will be like no time lost for you. And I see that these people who, who were in your life at that time, years ago, that that reconnection is going to be so profound. And I see them uh, with that, you're gonna, they're going to recognize that key in your hand. 
and they're going to open the door so that, heck, you know what, I was going to speak, but, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let Dr. Nick speak on whatever is God's put on his heart. I think that you're going to be given platforms, plural, platforms, where, where the, the doorways of the past, that the doors were shut back then, are now reopening today. And I see a resurrection of friendships with people that, uh, that there was that time and space of distance that will be reignited. And I think that what happened with the fox and that battle and that wounding and the, the preparation that God gave you in that will be a crucial key for you to talk about with the other people in leadership. Not about my, uh, not, not about my podcast. It's about what God has put in your heart and that you're going to be released into the realms that these people and their platforms have, and they're going to share that platform with you. And I think that that's going to birth into you another place of ministry that is the prophetic, but is more of the area of ascension and relationship with heaven. I, I just I can see that, that 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 there's not going to be a much hindrance of it. I think that God has been seeding the land for this, this sort of thing. I also believe you're going to be meeting leaders that secretly do this, <laughs> that secretly know the power and the experience of ascension, but they've been afraid to talk about it with their people or with other leaders that they may fear the spirit of religion. And I see you bringing freedom to them. I'll receive that, brother. Thank you. <laughs> As you know, or you probably don't know, I spend... Uh, hours uh, at the house of prayer so the, it's a ministry that i'm partnering with down here in the raleigh area triangle house of prayer and i'll, I'll spend i told the lord lord i will spend every free hour i have i'll, I'll be in prayer wow and so i'm living a life of prayer so uh, it, it's i love it when god opens the door and i don't have to push in the door right you know what i mean <laughs> favor yeah good wow well, I want to make sure I give you more time to talk. I mean, we have uh, about seven, eight minutes left uh, of our hour. Um, Dr. Nick, what else is on your heart? Anything? Uh, you know, Jerry, I, I just, I'm, yeah, it, I have been really contemplating a lot, just the, the period we're in. You know, I mm. came out here to, uh, we left a church of a thousand in faith to take a church of 60 in the middle of COVID and, and trying to get things going. And um, I was uh, in LA, I don't know, two, three years ago. And uh, flying, I was speaking at LA YWAM, get off the plane and this kid calls me from Y, gives me, in two days, I have five different people who I respect, have a prophetic gift. And the word was, Nick, you've been faithful. Now ask the Lord and I'll give you your heart's desire. Well, I, I got, I got saved in the Jesus movement. I was there in the Lonnie Frisbee days. I, I, I got saved by seeing a friend get healed by a word of knowledge. And, uh, and in 1994 in Southern Cal, with the outpouring of the Toronto blessing, we were right in the epicenter of that. So I've been in two wow. revival moves that I've seen the outpouring of the Lord. And Drew, when you're in that, it's not a work of man. It can't be attributed to anything else but the sovereignty of the Lord. Wow. And so my heart, us coming to North Carolina was, Lord, I'll, I'll come if I see if I can see revival. And Jerry, in this in this new revival, which in 1906, there was a guy named Smith Wigglesworth uh, and a guy named William Seymour who said, a hundred years from now is going to come a revival move that made what happened in Azusa Street pale in comparison. And I'm a student of revivals. I got my master's on studying revival moves of the past. Uh, I, creative miracles and so Dre, i'm looking forward to seeing the fulfilling of that pro uh, that prophetic word in my life uh that we came out here for and the word you gave me were were, were really golden keys that go okay look, nick this is this is this is what's happening and uh again i want to applaud your ministry but Dre, i believe we're in one of the most significant points of time in the kingdom yeah and uh, we we're in need of reformation with revival uh mm -hmm. we don't have a container that will fit it and so i pray that that religious spirit is, is slaughtered <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of jezebel is slaughtered right. and the spirit of christ is raised up uh, in a generation that's my heart amen thank you yeah thank you for your heart and i, I want to see it come to pass so uh 
So, so Joshua, so Caleb, where are we going to go? <laughs> We're going to take the land. <laughs> We're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And um, I, I'm right there with you, sir. <laughs> well, the yeah. chat's been a bit quiet. Guys, do you have any questions or comments or anything like that? I just want to let people know that um, if you uh, would like to receive a prophetic story from me, uh, you can go to our website, legendsthewind.com, and go to the product page called Become a Legend. You can also find the link in the description below. And if you haven't done so already, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button. We've got several people here that have not hit the like button. And if you don't mind, please share this out with your social media accounts and let people know what we're doing. And just so you remember, our work here is a creative work, partnering the prophetic uh, with the, cre uh, the creative arts. And so it's sort of like painting a picture, but using a story form. So that makes sense. And it takes time and talent to do that. So if you want to have a prophetic story, you can be on the show. If you don't want to be on the show, I can still work with you on that. Um, but I would love to be able to bless you with a, a story from heaven. So thanks, guys. And then Tom, Pastor Tom says, amen, kill that religious spirit. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Nick, uh, we're pretty much wrapping it up here. Please do not hang up. I'd like you to meet Alicia and Kylie again, if that's okay. okay. And, yeah. and Robin as well. But uh, everybody, guys, thanks for sticking around for this show. Thank you for letting me read Dr. Nick's story a second time. For those people who are new, thank you, Dr. Nick, for telling the story behind the story, for you to bring encouragement to, to me. I'm so glad I brought encouragement to you, to your wife, to your congregation. There's one more thing I think I said um, uh, the previous broadcast with you is that um, I believe that I will be careful here. The things that have been stolen from you, many will return and double. That you won't, you didn't lose half, you will get back them and double. I believe that there will be a recognition of religion and that they'll, they'll see the authentic love of Jesus that you will carry, you and Robin, your team, and that it'll be prosperous for you. Financially, relationally, I see you um, being really blessed because you endured. Dre, I love you, brother. I love Thank you, too. <laughs> cool, and my, my mom says, den bones, den bones, den dry bones come to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great, guys. Well, everybody, thank you for uh, participating in the chat and watching the show. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you on next Monday's broadcast. Just so you know, next Monday will be an hour earlier. Uh, we have a, a, a guest that's in a different time zone that made a request. So it'll be at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Don't miss it. And uh, Dr. Nick, stick around. And I'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Thank you. Have a good evening. See ya.